So, just this past week, we ran our first five games community poll to select the weapon that was going to be featured in this week's video. And the community has spoken. Final warning did jump out to an early lead in the voting, but after 48 hours, when I finally closed things down, the Junkyard Dog, Cerberus Plus One, came back for the win with 32% of the vote. Very close race all in all, though. But I actually do have a good bit to cover, so hopping right in. Cerberus Plus One is an exotic kinetic auto rifle firing at 360 rounds per minute in its base fire mode. It holds 31 rounds in the magazine and has a dumpster fire of a stat line. Recoil direction and aim assist aren't bad. Everything else, pretty rough on paper. The intrinsic trait is four-headed dog. Shoots erratic bullets from all barrels at the same time. So four barrels, four shots per trigger pull. And they're not completely erratic, but more on that in a moment. The exotic perk is spread shot package, alerting us to the fact that aiming down sights will keep that pattern a little bit tighter. And once you have the exotic catalyst unlocked, you can switch to the weapon's alternate fire mode. It's going to knock the weapon's fire rate down to 180 rounds per minute. That does result in a tighter spread, but only effective at closer ranges. So on a single trigger pull, we see that three around one shot pattern. One bullet lands right with the crosshairs with the other three at third points on a circular perimeter. And while sometimes it does kind of look like they're rotating in a clockwise direction, I really can't say that's definitely the case with any degree of certainty. But as you can see here, hip fire, wider spread, ADS, a little bit tighter, and the alt fire mode really does tighten up that pattern. Regarding the weapon's damage, first thing to note is that this weapon does have what is commonly referred to as reverse damage fall off. From 23 to 52 meters away from the target, each bullet is dealing their maximum potential damage. As you move closer to the target, the potential damage gradually drops as the odds of landing multiple shots in one round increases. So you pair that with the random nature of the shot pattern, and that makes trying to pick apart this weapon's damage splits a complete nightmare. I've tried an extremely analytical approach to this weapon in the past, I do not recommend. So what I did instead is test the weapon out at 5 meter increments with Mrs. Ironworker at tier 8 resilience and gave you some averages. And I worked it in two different directions, both when aiming at the head and then targeting center mass. And I think it's worth clearing up, those shots I have listed there are rounds fired, not projectiles landed. So at point blank, if you have an enemy's face barrel stuffed, you can drop them in 0.17 seconds with two rounds. And at this range, all those projectiles do smush together for one singular damage value. If you're hitting the body, it will take four shots, but still a very quick 0.5 seconds. Moving back to five meters now, this is where the randomness can begin to factor in. When targeting the head, the most consistent results saw me dropping Mrs. Ironworker in five to six shots, 0.66 to 0.83 for the time to kills. Targeting the body did give us some consistency at this range, six shots every time. At 10 meters, the results when aiming for crits did hold steady. When aiming center mass though, sometimes I was needing seven rounds. Back at 15 meters, that spread does become quite noticeable. I was still getting six shot kills when targeting the head because of the increasing bullet damage, but when targeting the body, it was taking 10 to 12 shots, 1.5 to 1.83 seconds for the time to kills. Moving to 20 meters where the weapon becomes very reliant on that center bullet. It was seven shots every time, one second time to kill. On the body, depending on how many projectiles actually land, 11 to 12 shots. Keep in mind though, these are what I found to be the most probable results. Your mileage absolutely can and will vary. Moving on to the alt fire mode, which personally I'm not a big fan of, but if you do want the information, here it is. Fire rate drops down to 180 and we return to a standard damage fall off model. And the damage is gonna drop very sharply after 15 meters. Two crits or three body shots will do the trick at point blank with 0.33 or 0.66 being the respective time to kills. At five meters when targeting the head, you're looking at three to four shots, but aiming at center mass is probably the better option at this range. I was hitting three shot kills every time. At 10 meters, I was needing four to five shots regardless of whether I was targeting the head or the body. And at 15 meters, similar story, five to six shots in both cases. And one more point of interest to highlight, Cerberus in its base fire mode can be very effective versus defensive supers. This is a weapon that can chew through a Titan's Ward of Dawn bubble given enough time, and while it will take a fair amount of rounds, especially if you're the only one shooting at it, it can do it. And in the same vein, this gun will completely obliterate Titan barricades. And Cerberus can also be very effective versus a Well of Radiance. If you're bold enough to hop into an enemy's well with them, you can drop the Guardian standing inside with very minimal effort. And it does make very quick work of getting rid of the spike. Now, just for the record, this is way more testing than I would typically like to do in these five games videos, but with Cerberus being a odd weapon, I felt it important to try to get you the full story, or at least as best as I could tell it. Plus, I mean, you did this to me, so I hope you're happy with yourselves. 
But I suppose thanks are also in order to those of you who kept me away from using Final Warning. Heading into the five games though, I'm back on Voidwalker making use of Blink in Astrocyte Verse, which honestly I never do. But my thought was I'm probably going to be needing to quickly close gaps on enemies, and hopefully this would do the trick. And for my offhand weapon, since Cerberus already has my close range covered, I'm going to give this Elsie's rifle a try and see how things go. And per usual, I do have the applicable armor mod stacked on to try to get the featured weapon a little bit more help. Into the matches, and the first game was on Meltdown, a map which I typically do like, and it was a pretty good showing for me personally. About a 2.4 efficiency rating, 19 defeats, Cerberus helped out with 13 of them, and as a pretty average PvP player, I'll definitely take that. Game 2 on Javelin 4 was, uh, not so good. Shotgunners and a Glaive user here got the better of me more often than not. Thankfully, I was able to keep my efficiency rating on the good side of 1, while my teammates didn't seem to be having the same troubles that I did, taking the win. Cathedral of Dusk was up next, and I was a little bit concerned because this map can favor longer range engagements, so I pretty much just made the B flag my home and tried to control the surrounding area. And it was a moderately successful strategy, largely due to the fact that the top fragger on my team was murdering everyone before they could get to me. Match 4 on Fragment was a pretty good one for me as well. I really didn't pile up the defeats here either, but I played my lives, I picked my engagements, and thanks to a rather strong showing by the rest of my team, 4 straight wins. Game 5, Eternity. Undoubtedly my best match of the set. 28 defeats, 4.0 efficiency. Those are numbers that I don't hit that often anymore. And I did lean a little harder on LCs here than I did in previous matches. Given the map though, I mean, what do you want me to do? I'm not sorry. Overall though, 5-0 for the set. An average of almost 18 defeats, with Cerberus typically chipping in on about 13 of them. And a couple of general takeaways. I think Blink still does a better job at disorienting me than it actually does in assisting me, but I mean, you can chalk that up to me never really using it. And I love Elsie's rifle. That is a great feeling pulse. Highly recommend. Regarding Cerberus specifically though, I really don't think the story has changed for it much over the years. There are times when it seems amazing, and other times it makes you want to pull your hair out, so it is fortunate that I keep my head shaved. Sometimes you get it on target, lots of shots land from that spread, and your enemy just dissolves. Other times, they're just not connecting and you can't believe your opponent's still alive. And as the wielder, you only have limited control over this. You can certainly do things to improve your chances, like not engaging from too far out, staying mobile and making your opponents miss when playing in tight, or just shoving the barrels right in an enemy's face and dumping a few rounds. But there's almost always going to be some sort of randomness involved to a certain extent. Could you also swap to the alt fire mode to mitigate some of that? Yes. I personally don't because I don't like the way Cerberus feels with that decreased fire rate. I think the base fire mode does a good enough job at close range, and I often forget to swap back to the normal fire mode if I do engage it. But if you want to try it, or if it works out well for you, by all means. One thing I will say this weapon is not is a beginner or user friendly option in my opinion. An auto rifle that shoots four bullets at the same time might sound pretty forgiving, but I don't think that's the reality for Cerberus. It feels like to actually be proficient with this weapon, you gotta have a really good understanding of what it is and isn't capable of, develop a subconscious feel for its best engagement ranges and use cases, and be okay with the fact that even if you seemingly do everything right, sometimes it's gonna let you down. That being said though, I do think everyone should take Cerberus for a spin every now and then, just because it's good queen fun. Even for someone like me, who is far more comfortable playing a few steps removed from the main action, Grabbing the junkyard dog and throwing yourself into the mix can be a really interesting change of pace. But that's uh, all I got to say about that. If there's a weapon that you would like to see added to the list of suggestions, feel free to drop it down in the comments. Four more will be randomly selected from the bunch, and the voting poll will go up on Friday so we can see what we're using next week. With that though, have a great day guardians, and I'll catch you on the next one.